Hey guys, it's your girl Kirsty. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you guys a QA, and a little bit of an update about my knotless braids and just answering some of the things that you guys asked in regards to knotless braids. So before we get it right into it, I just want to tell you guys, if you enjoy this content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so I know to make more. If you like this video, also give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to leave a comment down below on things that you want to see on my channel this year. Now, before I jump into the questions, um, I just want to say that um, condolences um, go out to the Bryant family and all of those who were actually involved in the helicopter crash this morning. Um, Kobe Bryant was a hero. To so many people, boys and girls, men and women, all over the world, and this is really devastating. So I didn't really feel like putting on any concealer today because I was like, you know, Kobe would say, you know, he would push through. So. I'm taking a little bit of Kobe <laughs> spirit. Push through the pain, push through any hurt or sadness, just push through, right? So anyways, yeah. So much love, blessings, and peace. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. How long did it take you to complete this style? It took me about seven and a half hours to complete this knotless braids on myself. Do you feel the braids are less heavy when you do it this way? Where did you get the wrap from? This will make my life so much easier when getting ready to braid my hair. This is a thread rack and um, I actually purchased it on Amazon. It's a 60 count thread rack and you, I use it to separate my hair, keep it separated. What is that? Where is it from? It's from Amazon. It's a thread rack. I call it a braid rack. You can do and call it however you want. You also can find it at Michael's, Target, Walmart, any crafts type of store. You should be able to find a thread rack. It's called a thread rack. If you go looking in the store for a braid rack, you may not see that. So, Do I feel the braids are less heavy when I do it this way? I'm not sure if she's talking about knotless or having a knot. But if she is talking about knotless, then I'll say yes. I feel that it's less tension. It's very much lighter and um, flexible, so yes. Man, I'm just struggling with parting above my ears. I IDK if my head is a weird shape or what, but it's not working out. So, one thing I noticed when I'm parting from you know ear to ear, um, normally when I start my box braids, you start with your first row on the bottom then you make another parting like this and then another parting like this and then here comes your ear now that's where it gets a little tricky so i'm going to show you guys what my parting looks like hopefully that can help you because what it what it is is you want to make sure that your first three partings are going to leave enough space so once you actually get here that'll be your fourth row okay so let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Let me tell you guys, I've had my breaks, it's three weeks now that I've had my knotless box braids in. So here we go. This is the row where my ear is, okay? So I'm going to I'm going to lift it so you guys could see. So that is my row that is above the ears, okay? 
So as you can see, the row is, it kind of goes just past the ear, okay? And then it just goes right above it, just slightly below it in the middle of your ear and just above it, okay? Don't try to squeeze in rows here, okay? Because what's gonna happen is this will not be a perfect square. So just go ahead and make your whole line going around. Same over here, okay? Starts here, right under the ear, slightly over. And the way that you get this measurement is by these rows. Don't be talking smack. Um, so basically, as soon as you, when you, when you're ready to part over your ears, um, you should, it should all be lined up and it all stems from that first few rows. If it's too cramped, you try to squeeze in four rows right there where it should only be three, then it won't work out, okay? So this person says, my biggest struggle is how much, is knowing how much braiding hair do I separate to prepare and add to the braids. So let's start with knowing how much hair to separate. Now I don't have any more black hair, but I do have pink hair. So I will show you guys how I separate my hair for my knotless braids. I also show this in my two other knotless braids videos. I have burgundy hair and then the first one is green. So in both of those, you guys will see how I separated and how I installed it, okay? So if you want to refer back to those plus this one, go ahead and check it out. But right now I'm gonna show you, this is how I separate my hair for my knotless braids. You want to grab a very small piece. You wanna grab a very small piece. Um, when I, be, when I learned how to do feed in cornrows, I learned that if you're not gonna start the cornrow with your natural hair, you need to start it with an extremely, extremely, extremely small piece of extension hair. This is so that way it looks as natural as possible, like it's literally coming out of your scalp, but it's not. Same goes for the knotless braids, at least when I do it, when I do it on my clients. I'm actually gonna be filming a video on my clients. Um, you guys, let me know if you really wanna see that, because if not, then I'm not about to be doing all that. But I think you guys would like it. So, here we go. First piece for your knotless braid is gonna be very small, so here we go. This is my first piece, and I'm gonna show you how thin it is. Like it's really thin, okay? Then your second piece should be slightly bigger, slightly. If it looks like it's the same size, it's really not, but now your third and fourth piece, your third and fourth piece, you're gonna make it a little bit bigger. And I'll lay all of these pieces on my braid rack so you guys can see. Here's piece number four. And just for some instance, you might need an additional piece just to even out everything. It doesn't always happen, but sometimes you're gonna need an additional piece. You may need it to make it the same length or whatnot as the other braids. So I'm just taking another piece, a little smaller than that fourth piece. Um, we don't want it to be too chunky. So this is a fifth piece only if you really need it. So here's the braid rack, okay? This is the fifth piece. 
here's the fourth piece here's the third piece here's the second piece and here's the first piece so you guys can see how it graduates in size from very small slightly bigger or of the same size a little bit thicker again a little bit thicker Here's your extra piece just in case you need it, but you may not. Usually I use four pieces of braiding hair when it comes to knotless, unless I want them a little bit larger. Then you just increase the size of each. But typically for me, I found that three to four pieces, sometimes five is the perfect equation, okay? So somebody says, how to know from small to big pieces of hair to take apart to add? I'm thinking that's how to separate the hair. How much, how to know, you, they wanna know how to separate the hair, then add it. I just show that. How much braiding hair do I separate to prepare and add to the braids? So again, that depends on do you want medium, small, or large, or extra large knotless braids. Um, typically for medium, in my opinion, I do about four pieces, but the size thickness varies because something I'm noticing is some people actually like bigger parts, like the actual square, they like it to be big, but the braid, they want it to be small. Some people want a thicker braid, but a smaller part. So it's all on what your client wants and it's all on what you want. I just typically go for four pieces to make like a medium sized box braid. So look at this braid. This is like medium to me. It Some people say it's small, but whatever this is to you, you make it till it's that way to do it. All right, next is well, it's not really a question, but it's a statement. When adding the hair, you make it look seamless. You can't tell where the hair was added. That's because I use pieces that go from gradually, you know, from small and then gradually get bigger in size. Somebody says, I really want to do this for my next look. What's the difference between knotless braids and regular box braids? Knotless braids don't have a knot here at the root. It's literally just you know, it's it's your hair, then it just flows into the braid. A braid with a knot, you'll see like a bump, a huge bump. And um, that's, that's the biggest difference. You're gonna see a huge bump. There's just a lot more hair that's used to do regular box braids as well. Um, what type of hair is best to use? So when I do knotless braids, I stick to regular length. Um, like Connectalon braiding hair. I don't have a brand to recommend because you can use really whatever brand. The thing is you want to make sure your technique that you're applying to that brand is gonna be executed flawlessly. So I use regular length, not no extra long length, not pre-stretched. I use regular blunt cut length braiding hair. It's, it is always connect lawn. I never use anything outside of that, um, like a Toyoka lawn or something. I use connect lawn because it's easier to dip and it's just lighter and I can it's easier on my fingers. So connect lawn hair, regular length, blunt cut. Okay, so I usually use a kettle whenever I'm gonna dip my hair. I don't usually use a pot unless for say for some reason that's definitely not really bound to happen I don't have my kettle I will you can use a pot that's old school you use pot heat the pot up and then everybody knows how to take the pot and you dip your hair into the pot or you pour it into a big cup I, we would sometimes use like two or three McDonald's cups because they would be so huge and long just stack them so you don't burn your fingers and then you 
dip your hair in there. Now when you're dipping your the ends of your braids into that hot water, you want to, you know, submerge it slowly. Okay? Then you let it sit in there for a little bit. Literally 15 to 30 seconds. Anything less is not even going to really seal the ends. Um, then you want to pull it out slowly because what happens sometimes when you submerge it the hair on the ends some are longer some are shorter whatever the case sometimes those ends actually can get really tangled when you try to just go in and then you're pulling it out so anyways do that slowly make sure you have a very thick towel to actually dry the hair off once you do and when you're drying it off you want to do this motion it's a pulling motion some of those questions that a couple of you guys had the main question was how do you part your hair um, I have videos on that I part with two mirrors I have a mirror on my wall and then I have another mirror on my bathroom wall which I'll just show you guys right now okay so this is the mirror on the bathroom wall okay then this is a mirror that I have on the actual wall so I pull this out right and then voila I can see the back of my head and that is how I part the back of my head so hmm let's see if I could make it any brighter for you guys that's how I do it anyway so I can see the back uh, but that's how I do it I have two mirrors I use this mirror on the wall here to help me see on this mirror and then when it comes time for me to part this side I'm looking in this mirror and I can see here so that's how I'm able to you know make the lines a little bit straighter and whatnot my bun fell down all right guys, so you guys saw how I part my hair. Um, that is literally my setup. So when I get in front of the camera, I do my rough part. Um, sometimes that first line is pretty good. And I, every time I go in the mirror and I see it, I'm like, oh, <laughs> nailed it. Then sometimes it is crooked. Trust me, I don't have straight parts every single time. But right after I part it here on camera, I shut the camera off and then I go straight to the bathroom and then I look in those two mirrors and um, that's how I get that done. Now, if you're not able to have a mirror on your wall that extends like I do, well, you could just hold a mirror. So you could just, you just have to have a handheld mirror, a handheld mirror and then, you know, do the same thing. It's just not on the wall. So that's my mirror setup. That's how I get my parts. Super neat practice. Um, something that we can all take from Kobe Bryant is that you will get out as much as you put in. This man put in so much and beyond. <laughs> Worked on broken bones and through sickness and still came out a winner. So. If you want to win with your braids and your protective styles all through 2020, put in that work. Don't be afraid if a part is crooked, okay? The thing about doing your hair is you're not paying somebody $400. I live in LA and yes, well, I live in Long Beach now, but I say LA because some people don't know where Long Beach is, but I live in Long Beach, it's still LA County. You're gonna be paying 400 plus for some knotless braids and um i when i do them on clients i actually charge 250 and then i get up to 300 dollars. now that's just me some other people also have it a little lower price but it ranges so the thing about hairstyles is the cost of living is changing so your price is gonna go up okay we're not gonna get into the debate about <laughs> what these hairstylers are doing and not doing because that's just a whole nother video in itself. But what, what you guys need to know is that by learning how to do your own box braids or knotless braids or just your own protective styles in general, you're gonna be saving yourself 
hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, especially if you have more than one head to pay for. So I highly recommend get your child, your niece, your whoever head that you can grab and part on their head, okay? Get familiar with the shape of your head, with the shape of a head, okay? And learn what tools work better on your hair because what tools might work good on me may not work good on you. Um, you may need more hair than me. I have a very small head. Majority people end up needing eight packs, six to eight packs of hair. I use four. So that goes to show you about how small of a head I have, okay? So, all right, let's go ahead and close this video out. Um, <laughs> you guys got this. I believe in you. Um, I literally, before I filmed my first Knotless video, I was like, crazy woman I was literally like I'll be sitting at the light and I will just be with my hands imagining my head I'm like okay so you want to hold it here tuck it under here hold it here tuck it under here tuck it at it like I was looking crazy and then <laughs> it like hit me I was walking up the stairs with my husband and my son and then I was kind of doing it as I was walking I said oh, I got it I said I'm gonna film the Knotless Braids video tomorrow because I literally was like practicing on my mannequin head. And then I was like just in my brain, like I was gonna get it no matter what because I was not about to pay somebody that much money and then they weren't gonna last. I didn't know if they were gonna last. I didn't even know if it was gonna look good on me. I didn't know and I didn't wanna chance it. So I said, I'm gonna go ahead and spend this $15 on all of these packs of braiding hair because I already have gel, I already have combs, and voila, <laughs> knotless braids for $15. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you guys only want to spend $15 for some knotless braids, then you guys need to click on my last three videos for knotless braids and just try, okay? Number one, I did it myself and I do my hair simply because I wanted to do my hair like this. So if anybody has anything to say, I'll say, well, I did it myself. What did you do today? Nothing but talk smack. <laughs> Much love, blessings, and peace. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.